God does in them and brings out to them. Uh, big things come after the small things. We, you, you very seldom do you just get right to great things. But, but you start off with small things and you work your way up to, to big things. And so we be appreciative of the season that we're in. You know, small is powerful. Preach. <laughs> the seven are the eyes of the Lord mentioned in the same context. They rejoice when they see Zerubbabel busy with the building work, with the plumb line in his hand. The eyes of the Lord see it all, and they are happy to see God's people at work. God, if you don't know that God is staring at us, I know we don't like when people say, what you say? We don't like when folks stare at us. We want to know what they're looking at us so hard for. But, but God is staring at, at each and every, every one of us. You know, his eyes happy with what he sees when he, when he stares at us. That's what we need to know. Is he happy with what he sees? Us doing or, 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 or is he happy or not happy with what he sees us not doing? Though the work was empowered by the Spirit of God, Zerubbabel still needed his plumb line. He still needed to get to work. God could have given Zerubbabel a shortcut and instantly, miraculously finished the work. That isn't God's way of doing things because his work in the life of Zerubbabel was a, 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 as important to him as his work through Zerubbabel. The work in you is just as important as the work he's going to do through you. God wants to do some work in you and, and he wants to do some work through you. You see, but before he can do work through us, he's got to do some work in us. And when the inward work is done, then he can do the through work. How can he use us to, to, to reach the laws if we still got some reaching inside we need to do? How can he use us to be a light in the community if we still in darkness ourselves? And so he's got to do some inward working in us, and then he'll do some throughward working through us. And both works are, are, are just as important as the other. Matter of fact, why don't you turn to somebody and say, you know what? Uh, uh, you a real piece of work. <laughs> you a real piece of work. You know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell them, that's right. I am a real piece of work. I'm, I'm God's work. Yeah, I'm a work in progress. But God is working on me. God is working in me. God is working through me. For we are his workmanship. Preach. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained that he would uh, should walk in them. Zachariah understood the message of encouragement to Zerubbabel, but he didn't exactly understand how it connected to the vision of the olive trees and the, the lampstand. In Zechariah's day, the two anointed ones were Zerubbabel and Joshua. It seems that they were not the entire trees, but, but two olive branches from the trees, probably one branch from each tree. The trees themselves may represent the kingly and priestly offices of Israel. God had a special work for, for these two anointed ones. Any anointed folk in the house? God's got a special work for you. Yeah, they, they would be uniquely anointed to, to work together. To work together. Not separate, but to work together. And to accomplish the work of God. We got folk either we work together but to accomplish our own work. <laughs> or we got folk who can't work together but trying to accomplish the work. But it's got to be together that we accomplish God's work. But how can two be in agreement? How can two walk together except we be in agreement? A house divided, it cannot stand. So but we got to work together to, for God's work. God often calls two men to work together. He called Moses and Aaron. He called Joshua and Caleb. He called Elijah and Elisha. He called Peter and John, Paul and Barnabas. God promises to raise up two more witnesses, anointed ones to preach the gospel 
to the world immediately before Jesus' return. Revelation 11 and 4 specifically says that these witnesses that these are the two olive trees and the, the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. The two anointed ones had work to do. And it would be so supplied by the Spirit of God that they would be like the olive trees with continual supply of oil for the lamps on the stand. Anointed one means sons of, of oil. And in Hebrew idioms, the sons of, of something is radically characterized by that thing. For example, the sons of Belial totally represented their pagan god, Belial. These two are so characterized by the ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit that they are sons of oil. Do we have any sons and daughters of oil in the house today? <laughs> Folk that are so characterized by the work of the Holy Spirit in you and through you that you're considered to be a son and a daughter of the oil. We, not, we note that the oil that came out of the trees. Real ministry is, is giving of ourselves. It does not matter how much we have. What matters is how much we give of ourselves. And people of God, the time has come for, for us to rebuild the temple. The temple has been in ruins for, for long enough. And, uh, the temple has been in shambles for long enough. And we've been questioning when. And I've come by to let you know that the time is now. We've been questioning if. And the answer is yes. We've been questioning how. And the answer is by my spirit, says the Lord. When is now, it is yes. And how is by my spirit, says the Lord. For this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. And this is the word for David's on today. The word of the Lord is saying not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Says the Lord. Oh, the, that's the word of the Lord for us on today. Uh, when the Israelites were in exile in Persia, uh, King Cyrus gave 50,000 of them permission uh, to go back to Jerusalem and to start rebuilding the temple uh, under the leadership of Zerubbabel, who was the governor of Jerusalem. Uh, we've been in exile for long enough, and now it is time for us uh, to go back to Jerusalem and start rebuilding the temple. Uh, the very thing that has held you up, uh, the very thing that has had you in bondage, uh, the very thing that has kept you bound, uh, the very thing that has had a stronghold over you uh, has now released you uh, to go back to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, we have to go back and get some things right. Uh, we have to go back and reconcile several relationships. Uh, we have to go back and forgive those that have wronged us. Uh, we have to those who we mistreated. Uh, we have to go back to where we first met Jesus. Uh, I don't know what Jerusalem represents in your life, uh, but whatever it is, you need to go back to it uh, and begin to rebuild. Uh, it is time for us uh, to rebuild, uh, build again uh, that which has been damaged or destroyed. Uh, for the enemy cometh but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Uh, Sin has come in and has destroyed the temple. First Corinthians 6 and 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not of your own? Disobedience has destroyed the temple. Lust has destroyed the temple. Deceit has destroyed the temple. Pride has destroyed the temple. And so now it's time for us to rebuild the temple. Brick by brick, layer by layer, faith to faith, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. We have to rebuild the temple of God. We have to rebuild the walls of faith, the walls of obedience, the walls of prayer. Us. He's trying to make us quit, to give up, and throw in the towel. But the word of the Lord has come today 